God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. So this teaching today is important because may it help bring clarity and understanding to, you know, many who claim to be believers or many who uh, want to be believers. But, um, you know, I know the topic, the title says that many, you know, no matter what a person does, you know, um, it says no matter what you do in, in false Christianity, it will never be enough to get you into heaven. But we'll get back into that. I want to speak on gospel songs and gospel singers. I wrote, they confess, God singers confess they aren't true believers in their songs. They always sing about being tired or losing faith. The songs show they have no power or faith. And I was listening to, um, you know, being a Christian, all we have is gospel music, right? We don't want to listen to, you know, uh, music that's, um, you know, of the world. But a lot of the gospel music is of the world as well. So you gotta be careful because it's basically like this. Gospel music has to be viewed the same way if someone was coming and misquoting scripture. Gospel music has to be viewed the same way if someone was coming and um, was saying things were in the Bible that wasn't. And gospel music has to be um, examined the same way as the Bible says to try the spirit. You know, just because a person is singing a song and humans love music, right? You can't uh, be deceived, right? Because they're singing what they believe is for God or for Jesus. They could be saying many things in a song. But when you listen to 99% of the so-called gospel music, right, that you hear today, a lot of it is worldly and a lot of it, they, um, you know, they don't have any faith. They don't have any belief. You know, they'll quote scriptures in there. They'll say, you know, David, you know, did he played an instrument for Paul, I mean, for Saul. And, you know, the uh, uh, Bible says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? So, like, they'll say different things in their songs. But... As you listen to what they're saying, they're doing the opposite of what the Bible commands them to do. The Bible tells us to rejoice evermore, you know, and give thanks always. These people be saying how, like, you listen to James, Fortune, and Fire. You got that song. He says, I'll trust you. And in the song, he's saying, you know, I got more bills than I have money. He's saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, like, even though, like, they're trying to, like, they're, like, he's ad-libbing, saying this stuff. And then he comes back and be like, well, I'll trust you. Like, it don't work that way, though. Like, I don't care how motivational, uplifting it sounds. That's not Christianity. We don't sit there and say, God, I almost lost my faith. Or it took me a long time to believe in you. Like, you're supposed to believe. The Bible says faith comes by hearing him, my word of God. Not faith comes by experience. Not faith comes by you know, going through uh, situations. Faith doesn't come, like, that's just like if you're saying you broke the law multiple times and now that you're in prison, you see that breaking the law has consequences. Either you believe what they're telling you in the law or if you break the law, you're going to find out that it was true. There's no one, there's, there, most people that are law by the citizens, they're not walking around trying to see, okay, is it, if I, if I rob somebody, would I really go to prison? If I do wrong, you know, if I, if I, you know, if I sell cocaine, like would I really, you know, get arrested? Like they either like, look, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't see multiple situations where people have been locked up. I didn't see the news, drug raids. I didn't see the news, people getting arrested. I didn't see murders on the news, everything. So they don't need to be convinced. That's the same way it is with being a Christian. You don't sit there and say, I go, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let my faith increase. Either you have faith or you don't have faith. That's all it is. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There is no other way they said faith comes. 
That's the only way faith comes. Faith is just like me telling you it's mosquitoes out here that's biting me right now while I'm doing this video. Either you believe me or you don't. If you see me smacking them and trying to, you know, kill them and, and hit them off me, then you, you know, you'll see the, 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 my faith in my works. Okay? Because I'm telling you they're biting me. Then I'm, in my actions, you see me swatting them. Right? So, the Word of God tells us all these things. We either believe it or we don't. We don't have to go through having three different women or three different men and then you're going to say, okay, I'm going to just give it all over to God. Like God already told you before not to fornicate. God already told you that, you know, um, you're supposed to be living for him and, and, and vice versa for the other person. So it's irrelevant to be saying all this stuff and saying that you're believing in God when it's not biblical. We ain't supposed to complain. If you if you think what I'm saying is too hard for you, then this life is not for you. That's all it is. Where do you see true Christians in the Bible were trying to force people to come to God? Where do you see true Christians in the Bible were trying to beg people to come to God? We ain't the same what you see today. These people are far. They trying to they just want the numbers. They just want you to send them, they want their tithes and offerings. They want to look like they the, you know, famous and celebrity status. The more people they got up under them or in their church, they're gonna look more popular. That's all that's the same way as in the world. You know how much money the the U.S. spends on the, uh, on the, on the, on their military? Billions of dollars. You know how many tanks we got? You know how many aircrafts we got? You know how many warships we got in the Navy? They spent billions of dollars, cause that's what that's what looks powerful. That's what looks good. That's what makes them feel good. He understand when they go to sleep at night. They can push a button and send some missiles across the world. They like that power. They like being able to be able to destroy. So when you look at these false pastors, they feel good. I got I got 70,000 members. They know how many members they got. So you see what I'm saying? If this is too hard for you in Christianity, it's just not for you. We're not going to lose any sleep, brothers and sisters. They didn't lose no sleep in the Bible days. Jesus never cried for, uh, for, for Judas when he betrayed him. Neither did the apostles. They never even talked about it after Acts chapter 1. They never was talking, oh, we missed Judas. Judas spent three years with them. Them brothers act like he never was there because he betrayed Jesus. That that love go out the window. You understand? It's like how people, you just like people pour something out the window. You know, some soapy water or something. Your air, your, your house is your air conditioning leaking or something on the floor, and you got a pot up under. You pour it out the window, <laughs> right? Get it out the house. You want to preserve the carpet. Them brothers didn't care about that because they betrayed. He he betrayed God for darkness. <laughs> you understand? They ain't speak evil against the brother, but it wasn't no love lost. You know, all was well. His brother betrayed the righteous one, the holy one, for the devil. <laughs> you know, it's no sympathy for that, brothers and sisters. You understand? So, the brothers wasn't talking about you. Oh, we miss you, Judas. We wish you still, we wish you didn't do what you did. Man, everything is a choice. And we know that. That brother chose to do what he did for 30 pieces of silver. You understand? The Lord said what? He gonna wish he never was born. Ain't that what the Lord said? The Lord didn't cry. Even the seven, the sixty disciples that walked away, did the Lord cry for them? Did the Lord say, "Oh, let me go, look at this big old ant on my phone"? Did the Lord say, "Oh, guys, don't leave. Please stay. You you don't want to go to hell." When did you ever see the Lord begging people? Where did you see Paul and them begging people? It's a choice. If you gotta beg people, that's not faith. Because it's supposed to be spontaneous. God possesses a nature that makes it easy for people to trust in him. <laughs> Look at the world around you. You breathe oxygen every day and you can't see it. But you've been taught that it's oxygen. And you believe it. You know why? Because your life depends on it. What's the difference between knowing God? You understand? So there's many things you've been told that you don't even know is true. You just repeat it because it's been told to you. Right? So... When you listen to these gospel songs, they're always talking about how I almost lost the faith. Paul said he kept the faith. There's nowhere in scripture where Paul talked about his faith was growing weak or he was getting weary or he was ready to throw the towel in. I'm going to show you where he didn't. He's going to tell you multiple things and I got all the words defined so you can know that brother never lost faith. You don't lose faith. You believe and that's like, that's like, that's like your mom being your mom. And you start saying, Mom, I'm just feeling like you're not my mom. Or I'm just feeling like, you know, you didn't really you didn't really birth me. Or I'm just feeling like, you know, you're not the the person who really, you know, took care of me. You know what I'm saying? Like how all your life you grew up with your mom. 
or your mom been around you all your life, if she has, and then you start feeling like I'm, I'm losing connection with you. I, I feel like you're not my mom anymore. I'm feeling like, how do you start feeling like that? You understand what I'm saying? That would be strange and weird, right? So that's what, that's when you look at these gospel songs, like I was saying, the James Fortune and Fire guy, the song say, I trust you. He's saying, you know, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Oh, I'm going to make it. But the Bible saying Matthew 6, that the Gentiles worry about all those things. He said, to see, he said, God already know what you need before you ask. He talks about how we're worth more than the birds. He says that he'll feed us and clothe us and all those things. He says, seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God righteousness and all the things will be added unto you. So if you don't have those things and you're singing about it, you're talking about it, you're always going through, then clearly you haven't seeked the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because he said those things would be added unto you. And way before you was born, David said something. David said, I was young, but I'm now old. I have never seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. But you look at all these songs. I got more bills than I can pay. I lost my job. Oh, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Like they're singing. They're, listen to me. I'm not up here being facetious. I'm not a jokester. I'm not a comedian. Ain't nothing funny about what I'm saying. You understand me? I'm speaking for the truth. Listen to what I'm saying. These gospel singers, all of them, 99% of them that sing these type of songs, they are speaking truly what they feel in their heart. They're just not Christians. They're telling you what they feel. And that's why people are going to always listen to it because that's how many false Christians are in the world that are comforted comforted by those songs he telling you he's not making that song he's making it but he's making it because he believes in what he's saying that's how he lives for his god that's how he believes in his god that's what he thinks he think his god is lazy he think his god takes forever he think his god is powerless he think his god is mean he think his god is emotionless you know they sitting there telling you god i'm ready to throw the towel in you know they was you know it's time they was angry they ain't going to say that, though. They ain't going to talk about how they was frustrated and they was angry, you know, because they feel like, oh, I can't say that. But that's how they felt. God sees your heart. But they're going to sing about the other parts. Oh, God, I know, you know, I was ready to throw the towel in, but you saved me, Lord. Right? You got people singing about, oh, Lord, I almost lost the Holy Spirit, you know, but you gave me another chance, you know. Um... They're, 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 they're singing about, I lost my, I don't have any money. I don't have a job. People done did me wrong, right? The devil attacking me on every side. They're telling you the truth. Those are false Christians. You never see no, there's no true Christian in the Bible that was throughout their life always talking about what was going on bad in their life. Jesus said that he'll give you his peace, Right? His, he said, my peace I give, my peace I leave with you, my, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives you. So all these people that sing in these God songs, they, they're going by it as, as the world goes about it. They're doing things, they're, they're like wu sun and they're meditating and they're, you know, they're, they're going to spa and, and place treatments to try to calm their mind and relax their body. They're taking like steam, shower, like all type of stuff. The same way, that's why the, Jesus said, not as the world gives you. His peace said he'll keep us until the end, right? He said, my peace I leave with you. His peace he gives us, right? His peace. That means we're always supposed to be in peace. And you know it's true because he spoke that before Paul wrote to rejoice always, right? And to do everything without murmur and disputing. Did you hear that? Paul said, do everything without complaining. That's what he says. But Jesus said first that he will give you peace that surpasses all understanding and will keep you. He said that he'll give you his peace. You've never seen the Lord have anxiety. You've never seen the Lord have fear. You've never seen the Lord have anger or laziness or pride. Anything that comes from not having peace, you've never seen the Lord uh, act in the flesh. He lived in the spirit, right? So then what does Paul back, back him up and say? All those years later, rejoice evermore. Be thankful always. In all things, give thanks. So that don't. So you you're not doing that when you're sitting here saying, "God, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, I don't know 
you know, where my money going to come from? God, I don't got no food. God, my, my car broke down. God, why are the false Christians always going through so much stuff? Where is the knowledge and wisdom that comes from the spirit of God? Why are y'all always talking about not having money, not having food? Why can't y'all, you got unbelievers that are living better than y'all. Why are they always singing about how, you know, the friends done did them wrong. They, uh, you know, got fired from my job, you know, uh, um, devil attacking me, you know, uh, I, I spent all my money, Lord, you know, um, I, I, I don't have any place to go. Like, why are y'all living like, like deadbeats? You know, like, why are y'all living like people, you know, who don't got no purpose in life? You know, you talking about you a believer. We always complaining about not having something. Why can't y'all get it together? Because you double minded and it makes you unstable. You jumping ship, you're crashing out. You're walking around, you know, like a chicken with his head cut off. You're sitting here saying that God is telling you to go to Africa and you sell all your belongings and you go out there. Then there's no more money coming in. So you got to come back home, move back in with your mama. You know, or you got, you know, it's all, it's something that you're doing that's unstable. You're giving all this money to this church, right? And then you're saying that God's going to bless me. You know, you're sitting here saying God wants me to go on a missionary journey, you know, and I'm going to do some do that. And then you go there and all this stuff happened and it's not the way you expected it. You know, like, why do y'all always have these testimonies of just just being miserable? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You always, all, all these songs, I'm all churched out, you know, help me believe, can I believe, I want to believe. It took me long to see that your love was true. See, they, see they're singing about material gains. When they're sitting here saying that, like, I'm, I was going through all this stuff. And like, you help me, Lord. They're basically saying like over a period of time, it was things going on in their life and they got financial, you know, uh, stability, you know, whatever was going through, whether they were mentally or physically, spiritually going through things, it subsided a little bit. That's what they feel as God intervening or God being God by them going through so many things and then those things subside or they not having money and then receiving finances. Okay, or they not having direction or plan or any way to go. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So why are y'all saying, I lost my job? I'm trying to get a job. I don't have no money. I have nowhere to go. Because y'all thinking that you're operating in the power. But it's your mind and demons that are directing you. It's not God. That's why you change like the weather. One minute you're a prophet. Next minute you're saying, I'm, a, I'm an apostle. Next minute, you're, you're going on a missionary journey. Next minute, you're going to feed the orphans. Next minute, you're by, it's never consistency. You look at anybody that's been claiming to be Christians who are not known to be mega pastors, okay, or just pastor over these false churches. They're always flip-flopping. You talk five years later, five years ago, they were something else. They were saying Jesus Christ. Now they pay, they say Yahshua. Now they were saying, they were saying God five years ago. Now they're saying Yahweh. They were saying this and they were saying that. Now, now they were saying, read your Bible. Now they're saying, read Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Then they changed. Now they, 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 before they were saying this and that. Now they're saying they're kings and queens. It, it never changes. Okay? It, it never changes. They never was truly in God. And they start getting too close to the truth. And they don't like that. So they start researching and studying, finding all these false doctrines. Then they start pushing them away from the truth of God's word. Then they start claiming... Hebrew Israelite. Then they start claiming kings and queens and the universe and, the, and my energy and all this stuff. Because they see when they first came, it was introduction to God. They started, you know, seeing the truth of God's word, and they didn't like that. So that demons start convincing them. See, this is what happened. Whenever you try to be, whenever you think that you're a believer, and you're not delivered, you're going to go back. You're going to go down to false Christianity, because the demons in you never left. So they're going to be fighting against you. They're going to be convincing you that this Bible's been altered. Look it up. And there's going to be something on the internet that someone falsely put up there that's going to support whatever that demon is telling you. Whatever. King James was homosexual. Who cares if he was or he wasn't? He didn't write the Bible. And he never allowed 
And nowhere in the Bible does it say that a homosexual is of God. It says an abomination. So what, if he was homosexual, who cares? He didn't, he didn't influence the Bible. He didn't change anything. Who cares if he was a, you know, a slave master, whatever the case may be. Whatever they want to say he did. Where, did, where is that written in the Bible, though? He wasn't the author of the Bible. He just made sure that it was translated the way God wanted it. God moved him to do that the same way he moved Pharaoh to not let the children of Israel go and to let them go. He moved these people. He moved, if you read the Old Testament, he moved even nations that wasn't of him. He controls the world. You understand? So if he wanted a king who had the power and the resources, financial resources, to make all these copies, to take all these scribes, and God already knew, he could have dropped it down out of the sky, but then y'all still would have complained. Oh, how we know it came from God? I wasn't born to see it. So so everybody that was going to be born, so so God going to wait for everyone to be born. So that means you got to die one day. So that means the person that's going to be born, he's never going to see the Bible dropping out the sky. Like, it doesn't make sense. That's why it's by faith. It's not by how it was given to you or how you got it or who name is on it. It's the words that's in it that leads to salvation, not King James or Geneva or... NLT, that stuff doesn't matter. It's the words in it. It's called the word of God, not the word of King James, not the word of Paul, not the word of Ronald, the word of God. Okay, that's what, what saves us is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter who King James was, what he did. His life wasn't able to, to influence the Bible. He wasn't able to touch God's word. He was a powerful source that was used to translate it the way God wanted it. He had the power and his word is law. That's what God did. Whenever kings, you better read about Nebuchadnezzar and Darius and Cyrus the Great and all of them. Their word was law. If they decreed it, they couldn't reverse it. You understand? So God just used someone that was a power and of status to give us what we have today. It's that simple. Who cares what he did in his private time? Pharaoh, who was Pharaoh? What did Pharaoh do in Egypt? And we don't care his backstory. We know that he, God hardened his heart purposely. And we know that God, you know, made him leave, let him leave as well. Same thing. Okay? So true Christians don't complain. We don't get angry. We don't murmur. We don't dispute. We don't, you know, we these gospel songs are for those who are false Christians because that's what they're going through. They need something to motivate them. Just like people go listen to motivational speakers. It's like people listen to talk shows. People listen to podcasts. They need that comfort because the world is troubled by darkness. Demons affect everybody. Satan affects everyone who doesn't have the Holy Ghost. So they need that. You know, these people don't have any wisdom. That's why all these false Christians are always talking about who wronged them and who troubled them and fake friends. And, you know, you always hear them. Like they, they always, then they try to use Christianity as if, like, all these things are happening to them because they're Christians. Now, this stuff is happening to you because you're not a Christian. The Bible will tell you not to be unequally up with unbelievers. You got robbed. You know why you got robbed? You got robbed because you allowed unbelievers into your house. <laughs> You're not supposed to fellowship with them. You know why you got an STD? Because you was fornicating with a woman. You ain't supposed to be fornicating, period, or a man. You know why, you know, uh, this and that happened? Because you don't got God's grace and protection over you. He showed you in Job what it looked like when grace is there and when grace is not there. Even Job's wife turned on him. You understand? So there's no grace. You're not learning from the Bible. Job's wife told him to curse God and die. You understand? And you see your wife and your husband at times. You, you, like, you, don't, you don't even know who that person is anymore at times, right? Job didn't know who his wife was. He said he sounded like a foolish woman. Job was shocked. But he knew that it was God's grace all along that had her on board. Because you got to have a wife to be a part of the mission. She got to birth out the kids so your kids can carry, um, you know, the word of God for their generation. But you see, when the grace faded, Job's wife turned on him. You see that? So you learn a lot from the word of God. So... True Christians ain't complaining. We ain't seeing old oh, things is rough. Why are things rough? The Bible say walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise. The Bible say be wise as serpents and harmless as dove. Where's the wisdom? How are people constantly taking advantage of you? How are people constantly, you know, doing you wrong? How don't you, how are you not able to discern that these people aren't who they say they are? The Bible say to try the spirit. He say getting one of the gifts of the spirit is discernment. How do you not have discernment? You always, oh, my job, my boss, you know, this and that happened. 
We're always talking about something that didn't happen to you. When was Christ not aware of what was going on? When was Paul not aware of what was going on? He said, everywhere the Holy Spirit is testifying that I must, you know, face suffering. Right? Paul was saying that. Even Agabus came and told Paul that he was going to be bound in Jerusalem. Like, where would the Bible say that he ordered our steps? So how are you? Oh, yeah. So how is God ordering your steps and somebody coming in your life that's a deceiver or that's being used by the devil, but God's not telling you? How are they even allowed to be around the light? You're supposed to have the spirit of God in you, angels around you. How is demons in these people just ever be that comfortable with you? How? Without being spotted. How you don't spot a wolf in sheep clothing? You don't know wolf got sharp teeth? Do, do sheep got sharp teeth? You don't know wolf got big pointy ears? Do, do, do sheep got big pointy ears? He, it's, a, it's a wolf in sheep clothing. So it's still a wolf. A wolf is bigger. Stronger, taller than the sheep. How do you not spot the sheep? I mean, you spot the wolf. Because you don't have the spirit. That's why they always sang in these songs. They always sang in them how people did them wrong, my money going, etc. Let's listen to what they say. All their songs saying the same thing. They always sing like this is how they start the song off. God, I've been through so much, but you bless me. You save me. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Like, that's fake. Because what, this, what, this is what's happening. Unbelievers don't believe in God, right? And it's times that they go through things. Some of them be alcoholics and they kick the habit. Some of them be addicted to drugs and they don't do the drugs anymore. They don't give God the glory. They had self-control. So... Y'all go through things the way the regular world go through. It takes time and you got so many friends that do you wrong and you've been dating and everybody took advantage of you and this or that, you know, multiple jobs and trying to find what career, then you finally found some place that you just stay at. That's just like the unbelievers. There's nothing different between you and an unbeliever. You have no direction, you have no leadership, you have no wisdom, there's no power in you. You can't tell friend from foe. You can't see the devil in disguise, right? The same way people in the world can't. That's why people in the world always talk about, oh, I was robbed, I was scammed, you know, uh, this was uh, a catfish, you know, or, you know, I, a person I, I met on the internet, you know, wanted all this money from me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They had the same uh, uh, testimonies as y'all. Y'all ain't never seen me since I had this page in 2015 on Facebook ever complain and you know I, I'm a human being right you know I go through everything that anybody else go through as far as just you know being as a human car breaking down you know tires going flat engine trouble whatever I have all those things go on right now my left side drop my right my driver's side window don't roll down it's like a hundred degrees out here and then my AC it keeps like blowing out warm air and blow out like this misty looking, like like it looks like a, a, a mist that come out the vents and it blows warm air. So I'm just grateful that every day that it's still just kicking, it's still just working, right? I have multiple things wrong with this van within the last week. I had to get a fuel pump, a fuel filter, a mass airflow sensor, <laughs> you understand? Like so many different things, but I never come up here and say anything about those things. I never talk about that stuff. Y'all don't know, y'all don't even know what kind of car I drive. Y'all don't even know what be happening, what be going on. Because we supposed to do everything without what? Complaining. That's right. See, the thing about being a Christian, we're different than the world because the way we respond to situations. Okay? We're going to go through things that people in the world go through. Not no demons attacking us. Okay, let me make sure I be pacific. Because somebody will try to chop this video up like I'm saying, like I'm contradicting myself. No, 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 no. We're not going to be attacked by demons. We're not going to have no sicknesses. Y'all hear me? I said we're not going to have no sicknesses. We're not going to be. Y'all have been seeing me since 2015. When have you ever seen me sick up here? Okay? You've seen me through the whole COVID thing. When you ever see me wear a mask? So let's just, I'm just keeping it real. I don't have no health insurance. I don't got no dental insurance. I'm just telling you the truth. If anybody knows me personally, they know my personal life. You ask Jeremy and Sarah, people that talk to me daily, people that know me, they know what's going on. They know what's going on, okay? So I ain't got to put on. I ain't got to, uh, 
I ain't gotta put on, I ain't gotta make up nothing. You know, it's the truth. But y'all never know things that I'm going through. Cause it's like I'm not going through nothing. You know, cause when you're a Christian, you got peace. So you just gotta get it done. But you're not like, oh my goodness, I just got the fuel pump, I just got the filter, I just got the mass flow. Like our car wasn't starting for like, for like a, a, like a month straight, the car wouldn't start in the morning. Every time we go to crank it, it wouldn't start. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. We took it to the shop. It was there for like three days. We didn't have no vehicle, you know? And the shop really wasn't communicating with us. They were saying it might've been the, the thr um, you know, the throttle body or something. You know, they was like, that was expensive, you know, I guess over a thousand. One shop said a thousand to do the fuel pump, all different type of stuff that had happened within the last month, just with the vehicle that we in right now. It wasn't cranking up every morning for like a month or two, right? And we just, you know, try to get it jump. We try to just crank it, try to start it, you know, until it start. And they was fixing stuff and fixing stuff, you know, and pay, you paying money, you paying money, you kicking out money, you know? But y'all don't know none of that stuff. Even the people that call me on the phone every day, they don't know none of this stuff. Jeremy didn't know none of this stuff. <laughs> you know, understand what I'm telling y'all? That's how real it is. Because it's just life. That's what we got. We got an older vehicle. That's what you got to expect. Stuff gets, stuff starts breaking down. You know, it has wear and tear. That just comes with life. So it's so, I can, I can get up here and name a lot of stuff that y'all wouldn't even believe. Or I wouldn't even understand. We got a whole, you know, we got a video on YouTube showing when we went through that season in the wilderness. But we got another, we got a part two to that that's going to come out later on, you know, towards the end of, of, of this season. We're going to show you part two of everything, how we drove with a broke transmission from Florida to New Jersey. <laughs> how we used to, how our doors in the car used to open up without us doing anything. It had electrical problems. We had a, 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 a minivan and the doors would just start opening on them, by themselves. Yeah, it's like you just be, you'll be in the store and you come out. Your doors are just opening and closing. The sliding door, it was, it was a, a minivan, so you know, I had the trunk popped open and the sliding doors opened up. So like in order to stop it, I had to put the car in drive in order to make it to where the doors didn't open up. I guess when it's in drive, it's like a safety feature to keep it from um, opening up. So that's what I had to do with that. Mostly every car I have within the last couple of years, the AC always went out. Um, Mostly every vehicle we had always had some type of transmission problem or engine problem. Most of them. It's many times we done rode around with the last years with no AC. The last van we just got, we just had no AC. You understand? They had electrical problem, had an oil leak, had a transmission leak, had all type of stuff. You know, many things was wrong with it. The uh, the vehicle before that. No AC. <laughs> and had, the transmission went out on that. So it's like, you know, the transmission went out on both of them. The black minivan we had and the silver one went out on both of them. But I've been making videos ever since then. Y'all never known anything. Never mentioned it. Never said, pray for me, y'all. Keep me in your prayers. Ask Sarah if I'm lying. Ask my mother if I'm lying. You know, you see my mother on Facebook. All I gotta do is go with my friends. We got the same last name. Ask her if I'm lying. If she wasn't around all that stuff when I was in New Jersey, my grandfather, right? When I was there with my grandfather. Ask them if that stuff wasn't happening. Ask them how many times the stuff, ask them how much they think everything would have cost and stuff. My mother was there through it all. Sarah was there. Jeremy knows some stuff the time he came around. Right, but it's stuff that I've been through recently that Jeremy don't even know through. No, cause I just just take it and just keep going. It's just another day, you know, another day at the office, you know. So all is well, brothers and sisters, all is well. Okay, the only way to get into heaven is do the will of God. No matter what you do in false Christianity, it will never be enough to get you into heaven. No matter how many homes people you feed, no matter you know how many food banks you do, God don't care about none of that. He doesn't care because his word has to be obeyed. You, a judge could put you on probation. You could say, well, judge, you know, I was out 
you know, talking to, to gang members, you know, trying to get them to turn from their life. It's a court order. He can't go against his order, right? If you really was doing something righteous, then you would have been in the house as you was commanded to by the courts and would have talked to them over the phone or FaceTime or something or was set up to where they can come by your house because your curfew was at 11 o'clock. You out at 2 talking to some gay members, you said, and you got a probation violation. So if you really was doing this, you would have supposed to have been in the house. You see? So God don't care. The judge not going to care either. You have to do God's will. They always sing about being sick or that they are ready to throw in a towel and give up. They don't have any money, but the Lord came to, um, but the Lord came to save them, right? That's how they look at it. They go through months and years of suffering as they believe. Then they, oh, God came and helped me. What kind of God is that? I would never be a Christian. Nine months, I got high blood pressure or I got cancer or this and that. And I'm praying, 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 and nothing is happening. And I'm reading the Bible where things happen in the blink of an eye. People were healed immediately. The Bible said in that same hour, that at that moment, right then, they were healed. He spoke forth the word. People, servants were stood up. And while they was on their way back to go home, they was already alive. He prayed for Jara's daughter. She came to life. He touched the, 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 the casket. The brother sat up. The little issue of blood touched him was healed immediately. Where do you see anything? Where do you see, where do you see anywhere in the New Testament or even in the Old Testament where somebody was sick? And God sent his power at that moment, and it took him a, a period of time. That's unbelievers. They go through surgeries and doctors and medicines and specialists and another doctor. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna send you to a specialist <laughs> that specializes in this. You're false believers. There are two billion that go through the same thing. They will always be able to relate to God's music. Because that's how people relate to going through tribulations without faith. It's like country music. They're always either sick, lost their job. There is no faith no matter what went on in their life. Everything spoken was concerning trials and tribulations. So why did I mention country music? Because people in the world have a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness because they have darkness in them. And Satan captures he takes away your peace. He takes away your joy. Remember, the Bible said a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he steals it. So like you want to be happy because you're a human. And there's things to be happy for, but it just doesn't last. Just like you smoking that cigarette. It's like you take that drink. Why do you think, think people keep on drinking? Because they want to keep that feeling of like just being numb to everything. Why do you think people smoke cigarettes? Because they want to get rid of that anxiety. It's, it, he, Satan takes it. He captures it. He takes it away from you. So the world be sorrowful. They be sad. So country music, when they hear it, you know, they, it, it uplifts them because someone else is going through it. And then, you know, they might speak negligence. Say, oh, you broke my heart, but that's okay. I got me a new girl. You know, they it's something. Retaliation to whatever they went through. Or they going to say it in a way like, you broke my heart, but I know that I'm a good man. And, you know, God will bless me one day. You know, whatever, however they're saying, right? And you're going to relate to that. You're going to say, yeah, she cheated on me too. But I'm a good man and God going to bless me one day. Another thing too I wanted to share, and this is off topic though. I see and I have seen so many people that make God to be whatever they want outside of God's word. They'd be like, God going to bless me. You know, God, like they'd be all the way in the wrong and they're going to make God be, become Satan. They're making God become Satan in their mind. These people are doing all type of evils. They're speaking evil. They're acting evil. They're living evil. They're thinking evil. And they'll say, God, but God got my back. You mean the devil got your back? Because God's a righteous God. The Bible said that God would have been light have with darkness. The Bible said, God, hear of not sinners. God has nothing to do with you in darkness. You better look at what happened to Jesus on the cross. What did he say? Why have thou forsaken me? God wasn't around nowhere where sin was at. You understand? You don't have nothing. He, he can't come around it. You'll drop dead. Darkness can't come around God. Yeah, ne never mind. But listen, they make God to be whatever they want because they're superstitious. For superstition, people will put a horseshoe over a door for good luck. 
But for 20 years, you had nothing but bad luck. But that horseshoe is still there. Because they're superstitious. That's how they treat God. God is nothing but a horseshoe in their imagination. Why do you think rappers wear Jesus pieces? They don't believe in God. It's that Jesus piece. Because they were taught by some false grandmother Christian or some false Christian uh, mom or some false Christian dad or some false Christian uncle or pastor told them those things. That's why they're walking around living for the devil but wearing a Jesus piece or a cross. Or they're mentioning God in their song. They think being possessed is the, the movie Exodus of Emily Rose. They think that's what being possessed means. They don't understand that being possessed, you could be a fully functional, normal, like how you see people as normal. That these people, are, these people around me that's possessed right now. You know what possession is? That means the demon is just in you and it has ownership. You're going to live in darkness and live in sin. These, you see God, they'll be gossiping, they'll be angry. That's possession. Everything that's the opposite righteousness is possession. That's what that is. What do you, what do you, what, what were demons doing with people in the Bible? What were they doing to people? The lady that had a demon in her, right, in Acts 16, it said what? That she did enchantments and soothsaying, so she was like a fortune teller. Did they say she was, she was talking? These guys have come to tell you about God. She was talking like a regular person. She wasn't jumping up like, y'all don't know the Bible. Y'all, y'all letting these, y'all letting Satan move these directors to make these movies to show you him with horns and, and a scary looking creature. He don't even have no flesh. He's a spirit. So anything anything that you ha have ever seen about Jesus and the devil is not true. Okay? Because there's no one that's alive today that has seen the Lord. So all them pictures and all those whether, whatever, blue eyes and blonde hair, dreadlocks and whatever, that stuff is fake. Don't no one know what he looked like. You understand? They, they made him to be what they want him to be. People have a, people have a, uh, people have a, uh, you know, a bad habit of just doing what they want and making things to be what they want. That's why they got denominations. That's why they call themselves Christians and live like the rest of the world. Because they can do what they want. People are superstitious. Because your conscience will always let you know when you're right or when you're wrong. Right? So just like that horseshoe that you got over your door for good luck. That salt going over your shoulder. Whatever you do, not splitting the pole. You ain't split how many poles since you see a pole. But you still got bad luck. You ain't break no many. You ain't break no mirrors, but you still seven years bad luck. Ain't nobody sweep your broom. You walk up on no ladder. You know you ain't see no black cat, but you still got bad luck, right? Cause you're superstitious. These people that claim to be Christians, and the the, the ninety nine percent and the two billion that you see on Google, they are superstitious. That's it. They just convicted more than the average person, so they're just superstitious. That's why that horseshoe over your door has been there for 20 years. And for 20 years, you done been through all them type of things. It ain't bring you no good luck. But it gives you comfort just to think that it brings you good luck. You feel comforted because you it's something there. That's how they treat God. God is like a genie, like Aladdin, Shazam. They go, oh, God, God's going to bless me. God's not about to bless you. You're going to receive... What anyone else in the world receives, that's not a part, that's, that's not with God. He's going to give you life, you'll get food, water, you know, you'll live to whatever age that he assigned to you, and you'll die and go to hell. Nothing personal. He's going to use you as a statistic. A lot of y'all are being kept on this earth so you could be statistics. So when people who don't believe in God see your evil works, see your lack of faith, see your life of sin, they'll look at that and it'll prove God's word to be true. Or when people who really want to live for God see your life as a false believer or as a, a, a no believer, it will, tell, it will strengthen the word of God to, for his word to be true. Because everything that you're going through and you're doing shows God's word to be true. Fornication, adultery, no marriage, cheating in marriage, you know, uh, lustful, uh, anxiety, fearful, gluttony. So you're everything that the Bible says not to be. He got to leave you here. So some of y'all are going to be preserved. Some of y'all are going to be preserved. So you're going to think, yeah, God's blessing me. Yeah, think that. Think whatever you want to think. Okay? You, who going to tell you that he's not blessing you? Think what you want to think. You can't find it in the Bible. You can't trace it back to the Bible. So you can think whatever you want to think about God. You can. 
but you'll never find it in scripture what you think about God. God is going to take care of me. What, why, what, what, what are you waiting for? God ain't got no legs we got to walk to you. God ain't got no lungs where he got to breathe as he's walking and, you know, thinking all this stuff. When, when's he going to do it? What, how can a, why, why is it taking a spirit so long? God is in the world, out the world, in the universe, everything. What, what, what's, what's taking him so long? What, did, did, did you read in the Bible where it says that when you need God's help, it takes months and years and days and weeks? Did you read where it says that when you pray and ask God for help, healing, deliverance, whatever it is, peace, joy, whatever you're going through, that it's going to be 90 days before that happens. So where do you get this mind frame from? Who tells you? Let me just wait on the God. You see? You're just superstitious. That, that, that horse you've been up there 20 years for good luck. You don't have nothing but bad luck. Okay? Look what Paul said, though. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I kept the faith. So what are y'all talking about? And you're sitting here talking about, ah, my faith was going weak. I almost you, You're not like Paul. You can't relate to Paul. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. We are troubled on every side. That means this, uh, we are, um, let, me, let me read it like this. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of, of also Jesus might be made manifest in the body. Okay? So when he's saying we're troubled on every side, right? Suffering from anxiety. I mean, we're troubled on, on every side, but not distress. Okay? Distress means suffering from anxiety, sorrow, or pain. Right? Perplex means completely baffled, very puzzled. Uh, not despair means the complete loss of absence of hope, hopelessness, desperation, distress, anguish, pain, unhappiness. Persecuted. Subject to someone hostility, ill treatment, especially because of their race or political or religious beliefs. Opposed or victimized, ill treatment, mistreat, whatever. But not forsaken, abandoned or des deserted. Cast down. Discard, rejected, but not destroyed. Put an end to the existence of something. So what are y'all talking about? I just broke all these words down. Let me read it again. We are trouble on every side, right? We're trouble on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. <laughs> so what are y'all talking about? Do y'all know what Do y'all know what um, uh, distress means? Anxiety. So you just said, y'all just saying, God, I don't know where I'm going to get money. God, I don't know. I just love my job. God, I need you to make a way. God, this and this and that. You know, that's what you're saying. But Paul never said that. Paul said, we're not distressed. We're not in despair. Okay? Right? Despair means a complete loss or hope, hopelessness. But you hear them all the time. I, I, I'm, you know, I ready to throw the towel in. I ready to, that y'all not Christians. Paul said he kept the faith. Okay. Philippians, uh, four, Philippians four and four and eight. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You hear that? Rejoice in the Lord always. You're not rejoicing you're not singing these gospel songs. You know? You're not rejoicing when you're singing these gospel songs. Y'all are talking about, oh, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, even singing that stuff is not of God. Because you're commanded to not even talk that way. So even if you're trying to say it like you're trying to relate to people and trying to get them, you, you're still committing to sin. Because the Bible said not to even talk that way. Say, let your speech be a great season with salt, right? And it said not to murmur and dispute. And it said, rejoice in the Lord always. You can't, the opposite of rejoicing is what? Rejoice means to what? Rejoice means to what? Feel or show great joy or delight. The opposite is mourn. So when you're saying, I lost my job, my, my, my friends done did me wrong. God, I, don't have, I got more money than I got. I got more bills than I got money. Lord God, the devil. 
you, that's a complaining. You're murmuring. You're mourning. You're sorrowful. The Bible says the opposite. Okay? Thessalonians says what? In verse uh, chapter 5. Rejoice evermore. Pray without season. Everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. These people that you see today are not Christians. These gospel singers, you know, we just we, we don't have no other music. So that's where I listen to, but you got to be careful you listen to. They be saying stuff that is not biblical. They be sh confessing that they don't have faith. They be talking about how they live in sin. They be talking about they not the this and that. They're, nowhere can you find those things in the Bible. Love you all. God bless.